everybody, and welcome back to the non-league adventure with me, GW365, playing as Easley FC, now in the Skybet Championship. Uh, we got promoted last time out, if you uh, remember. And with that in mind, I'd like to just apologise of the slow release of uh, content at this moment in time. Just finding time to sit down and edit, to be honest with you. But yeah, hopefully we're going to get back into the norm. Uh, this particular video is probably going to be a... Um, one game one um, along with the, like the transfer talk because it's been a couple of uh, transfers uh, first of all I'm just going to go into this uh, for the friendlies uh, as you can see we've had a really successful um, campaign uh, a couple of a couple of games to note really Northampton Town we hadn't beaten them in God knows how many attempts uh, for some reason seemed to be a bogey team in the friendly however 9-1 what the hell then we beat Carlisle another because of peace of mind I thought oh, I'll have a Friendly against Carlisle, one five two. Um, Road JC came along to. Um, God, it's bad that I don't know the ground. Silver Lake Stadium, uh, five thousand capacity, call it, and we're still, <laughs> we're still winning the championship and still not improving it. Um, we're improving the scouting range and off offering me a new contract, but nothing to do with the, the ground yet. Um, I then had a game against Curzon Ashton, our old team, where there's not that many players left. For that reason, I'm gonna show you who's left. Um, just look at all the players. Kenny Pabe is the manager now. Shamal George is still there for all the long-term watchers of this save. We've got Shamal George still in goal. Um, you've got Henry Rowlandson, a guy who signed from Leeds. Um, Freddie Yao still there. Uh, well, so the Shola Ayula is still there, but everyone else it seems has unfortunately moved on. Uh, a lot of a lot of the players have actually retired. I won't go into all of them in detail. I'm just trying to see if there's any any of my former players there. Shamal George still looking half decent um, for that level anyway. Um, he was a very good goalkeeper. It was a shame that we didn't get promoted back up because I think I probably would have stayed because Ashton if we'd have got back into the Vanarama National League. But as it happens, uh, going into their overview, um, they haven't really done anything since. That's where I left them, eleventh. Uh, they finished third the following season, but then after that, 10th, and it's a steady decline. Nearly got relegated last season. Uh, yeah. Um, but that's Cousin Ashton, for those who give a crap. After that, we've played two local teams for me. Um, destroyed them. And <laughs> we got recently relegated Leeds. I thought, well, it's a team I support. Let's have them again. And we absolutely destroyed them. 4 0. 3 0 inside 15 minutes. Well, 16 minutes, call it. Um, and then Johnny Bate getting a late goal. I, mean, I know they're only friendlies, but you've got to feel very positive about his chances of surviving at least. You know, Dundee ca came, they had literally about six chances scored, one of them, and it was a penalty. Uh, we just had about 25 shots, we had five clear cut chances, five hitting, hit, hitting the woodwork. Uh, we're completely dominant, and, you know, we've scored a hell of a lot of goals there and only conceded, albeit easily under 21s. God knows why that was such a hard game for some reason, but uh, two, three, five. Six goals all pre-season, and well, I'll let you do the maths for a second there. Um, so yeah, the, the, today's game is going to be Norwich, um, because there's, there's some transfers to tell you about. As you can see, there's quite a lot of players. Um, we'll start with the outs first. There's only one, and it is Jake McCarthy, a really good player for us uh, in the last two seasons, uh, mainly back up last season, but in the League 2 campaign was very much instrumental in uh, our our success in the defensive side of things. Uh, unfortunately, he's just he's on the he's on he's 26. He's not really worthwhile. Um, it has paved the way for another defender to come in, which I've made a slight mistake um, because I d I've done a Liam Grimshaw. If you remember Liam Grimshaw, he was like two foot six. I've kind of done that again, although he's like two foot seven. Is this guy? Um, but I actually changed that from centimeters to inches, so you, like six foot whatever. Uh, instead of 180 centimetres. Um, yeah, so we've spent money for the first time. Um, I've actually broke, got me achievement for spending, breaking the, the club's spending record. We'll start off with a couple of youngsters that we got. Christian Holden, um, trying to get him, uh, half, half of them out on loan. Um, looks very, very handy for a, a defensive midfielder slash defender slash centre midfielder. Uh, can play in like cover quite a few areas. He's only five foot ten, so he's probably seen more as a centre midfielder. He's a strong player. He just needs to improve a lot in his physicals and what have you. But he's only eighteen. He's got some potential. Four, four and a half star potential ability. So I'm very excited for him. Following that, we've got Josh Wood, who is a defender. 
uh, centre back um, camp sort of play sweeper, but it's unlikely I'm gonna, ever going to use that. I've got it ba basically because he's, he's 18. Um, he's got some good potential again. Um, and I don't know, some of his stats are pretty good. Like decisions is 12, position is 13, tackling is 11. Yes, it's not uh, amazing. He's very fit. His jumping reach is 13. I've just gone down. It was 14. I just thought he's got he's got room for improvement. He has been injured recently, which is probably why he's got some decline on his attributes. Continue with the youngsters, Brett Carroll and Steve McKenzie, because these are the ones that aren't really going to be featuring this season. But as you can see, this guy is on loan at Stockport and impre improving a lot already, it seems. Um, scouts from Ifferson Resign got the actual like normal ability, but he's basically a two-star player. It's over here uh, at the minute, 18 years old, um, with four to five-star potential abilities. So I thought it's a no-brainer. If we can get him to improve a lot, maybe get him to eventually be the complete forward, that would be very handy indeed, because that is what we seem to be lacking in this tactic. I'm trying, I'm trying to find someone, but there doesn't seem to be anyone. Other than that then, Steve McKenzie, another centre back but right back um, as well, can play two positions. He's six foot six, so he's a, a handful basically. Um, not the best yet, but again, got some potential. He's out on loan at Bromley, um, a very low uh, standard of, of course, compared to where we are, so he's not really going to feature. Uh, one and a half star. Um, current ability, um, but like you can see there, he's got a lot of ability. He's 18 years old and reasonably cheap, you know, in terms of wages, 750 pounds. Um, but yeah, I'm 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 not going to say he's going to be amazing, but he's got some good starting stats like his strength, jumping, reach, marking, decisions. Again, work rate is very good. Aggression sometimes it's good to have aggressive defenders. Um, but yeah. That is Steve, Steve McKenzie. Right, let's go into the other free transfers. You remember Ben Liddell from last season? Don't really need to say much about him. You know you know what he's all about. He's a good player. Uh, he does a very good job. Uh, All-rounded player, I think. He's probably the best way I'd describe him. Um, one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to set a few nicknames. Just to try and make it a little bit more interesting, maybe. But the shop is in full force here. Liddell, as in like the supermarket Liddell. I thought the supermarket might be a little bit too high, uh, but never mind. So we've signed him permanently, the shop. Um, we also signed, you might recognise this name, Joe Lewis from Portsmouth. They got relegated last season, so they're going to be in League One. He's basically my backup goalkeeper. He's got a clause in his contract, 15 games, he gets another year. Um, chances I probably won't, but if he does stay, I'll probably keep him on another year for backup as well. Um, he's had, you know, a half decent career mainly in the Championship and League One, um, was in the Premier League briefly, played made one appearance for Cardiff before uh, this, well, before the starting point of this game. So he's going to be good, uh, a good, under, well, I would say understudy, but he is effectively going to be back up to Willie Eskalainen. And it's, it, I've tried to avoid loan signings where possible. We have still got some, I'll get onto them later, because they're basically the same ones from last season. Well, most of them are anyway. Let me sign Stephen Kinsella from Dagen Dagenham and Redbridge. Um, I have seen this guy before, I believe on, I want to say, Dr. Benji, but it could have been Lelujo. I'm, I'm going to stick with Dr. Benji. Um, very very good player. The only thing I think that lets him down is his acceleration. But he's, he's basically going to be back up um, for Andrew Powell. And we, yes, we've still got Tommy Buckles. He's going to be back up for them. Can play in either position. Um, either wing, so he's, he's going to be a good good option, for maybe to bring on, on off the bench. So that now brings us to the monetary valued players. We'll start off with Danny Kane, and this is a defender. I'm about. He's only five foot nine, which is you know Grimshaw probably five foot seven. Very very good stats. Got him from Wigan. He's a four star player for the Championship, which I thought I've got to get him. I mean, he's determined. All all his mentors are brilliant, basically. I mean, Flair, you don't really need it. Not the most aggressive player, but I just think it's a solid all-round defender. Um, heading, marking and tackling all 13. You know, he's going to be the covering uh, ball-playing defender. His passing's 10 as well, and vision is 11. So I thought £350,000, um, I don't think it's too bad. He's on £3,500 a week until uh, for three years. So it's a long-term contract, but I like the look of him. I thought he was very good. And he's obviously a lot better player than Jay McCarthy over here, although... He's a little bit taller. Then I'm going to go on to I'm going to go Russell Russell first because I'm most excited about Martin Smith. But Russell Russell, we got him from Portsmouth. This is him. He's a left midfielder, um, very quick. Not as quick as Buckle, of course, but uh, I think he's more well-rounded in terms of his technicals and his mentals. So for me, he's going to be a big player for us. And yes, he, that is his real name. Why? 
why would you call your kid Russell Russell? I have no idea. But he's a regen, so I suppose it's to be expected. Finally, Martin Smith. He's a centre midfielder, and it is something we've got quite a lot of, because obviously we've got Liddell and, uh, well, the shop now, and Regan Charles Cook, uh, Jake Azentala, and Liam Walsh all battling it out in that middle, for that those two middle spots. So, unfortunately, someone he's going to be missing out quite a lot. But Martin Smith can dictate the tempo, he likes to help the keeper, tries long range passes, likes to switch ball to the other flank. Um, this ties in with his very impressive, impressive passing stat of 16 and vision 15. I, I also liked the fact that he had a penalty taking stat of 15. He can actually play the roaming playmaker role naturally, a bit like Walsh. So now I've got, literally got two players that can actually play in the roaming playmaker role, which means Hezenthal is probably going to be more of a ball winning midfielder, and he is the captain. I can't leave him out too many times. Other than that, you know, fairly well rounded. His anticipation, bravery, and determination could be higher, and concentration for that. But I just thought, four star player th at this level, didn't think it, it was there was too much to think about. He's 26 years old, so he's he's in his like his peak years now. So we're going to get the best of him, I think. The peak years are probably going to be 27 up to 30, 31. So we've got him for two years anyway. Um, right, other players to mention. Andrew Powell is back, increasing his, his attributes nicely. Yeah, he, obviously he's solid. He's got a little bit quicker. He's very good at crossing. We all know about his uh, assist exploits of the last couple of years. He's got 45 assists in the last two seasons, which is absolutely crazy. Um, and very impressive average ratings for the seasons. So, very happy to have him in for another year. And Tommy Buckle is the same, he's, he's in for another year. He had a bad injury last season, which did hamper him a little bit, but he was very impressive last season, as you can see there. Mainly, I'm going to say down to his pace, uh, because obviously he's not really got much else. His determination is pretty good, teamwork's good. And technique's very handy, but his finishing's only four. I wish that was, ha was higher. Composure's a 10 as well, which is not bad for a midfielder, a uh, left midfielder. Other loanies, yes, we've got Roy Brewer in for another season. I tried to, I mean, look at him, four and a half star current ability, five star ability. You know, he's, he's just mint. He's, he's awesome. I tried to sign him. I asked him, he was like valued at the time about, what, 650k? They wanted around 15 million for him. And we have, well, we spent some. We started off with about 750 grand transfer budget. I had to adjust the uh, budget to make it so it doesn't look like we're in uh, overspending. Um, but yeah, at the time, I think it, it was at 450 when I adjusted it. So, uh, And finally, Johnny Bate is here for another year as the, the other backup striker. There wasn't anyone else. So I, I in the end, I opted to extend his contract, as, not a contract, his loan again. Um, he's still a very good player, really. He just His jumping reach lets him down for playing in the complete forward role. But it's still a very handy um, option to bring off the bench. And the fact of the matter is now, we've only got four loan signings. So we'll be very... Um, it, well, we'll be, we've got a lot more flexibility now. We can't leave... Play we don't have to leave players out uh, because there's too many loan players. Because it's going to start five uh, in the, the whole squad, basically, including the subs. So that is that. Other players that are still kicking about, you've got Gerardo Martin, who is going to be probably... Taking more of a back seat this season, unless there's an, a couple of injuries occur, uh, he might be called upon if things, if like players don't perform. Um, and like I said, it's going to be one of Martin Smith, Jake Hezenthaler, Charles Cook. Which that reminds me, I'm going to be changing some names because I, I mentioned it last time um, that they just, I don't know, I struggle with some of the names for some reason. Don't know why I'm going on that. We're going to call Regan Charles Cook the chef. Because of Cook, yeah, I, I gathered you, you got that. So we've got the chef. Uh, other players, I suppose, Jake Clark Salt, that's another one I struggle with for some reason. You're going to be called. That's right, the salt. Pass the salt. Pass to the salt. Or something along those lines. So, uh, other than that, we've got Buckle, which I'm going to change it to the belt. And then finally, I'm just just for ease of like saying it when when it is just like when I'm picking teams, I'm just gonna call Gerardo Martin. Gerardo, simple, can't even spell. Definitely not. Why? Have I, what am I doing here? What, what have I done wrong? Oh, he's there. It's, his name's on the screen. Gerardo. 
just Geraldo, that will do. Because I keep, it's like the double barrel names that just, I don't know, struggle. Don't know why, but anyway, that's sorted. I think, is it anyone else? I think that's it, haven't we? We've got the salt, we've got the chef, we've got the shop, we've got the belt, and we've got Geraldo. That's all, that's all the changes I need. Right, long-winded, got through the transfers, let's get into the game. So today's game is Norwich City versus Eastleigh FC at Carrow Road. So starting for Norwich is in goal D. Rea with S. Cook, P. Williamson, Ensar and M. Fox in this in the at the back four. Uh, we have J. Taylor and Josh McEachran. He's the only one I, I know really uh, in the middle of the park. We have D. Sears playing an attacking midfield role. We have Akpom on the right and Angelino on the left with P. Edwards up top. The main threats for us. For the opening game of the season, we're going to go with Gaskalainen in goal, with Josh Murray at right, Aidan White at the left, Akil right, and Danny Kane at the centre backs. A uh, new partnership, of course. Powell and the belt on the wings, with uh, Liam Walsh and the shop in the middle of the park, with Callum Saunders and uh, Brewer up top. Yeah, Norwich have been a bit of a yo yo cl club since uh, this season, well, since the game started. They finished 17th in the first game, narrowly avoiding relegation, followed up with a relegation. Mid table, championship finish, uh, went up automatically, down again. And like I say, yo yo. They finished third last season and, and obviously didn't go up via the playoffs. So I'm calmly telling them to, uh, you know, go out there, there's no pressure on you. And I've said I've got faith in them and what have you. Let's get into this game against Norwich in the championship. So, we get the game underway. It's probably a false highlight, as per usual. I like to say that, it seems. Uh, but Saunders has got it. Is there an early chance here? It's a great ball towards the belt, but Cook heads away. And that, I would imagine, will be the end of the highlight. Indeed, it is. Powell's got it and finds the shop. Shop now to Powell. Powell on this right-hand side. Whips a, a delightful ball in and brew at the back post. Puts it narrowly wide. But, you know, looking at the possession stats, we are losing a little bit. But we've created the chances so far. White tries to find a shot and he does. McEachern can't reach it. Finds Saunders. Saunders turns and plays it. Powell. Oh, Ryan in goal. With a save. It was a clear cut opportunity. Second one of the game for uh, Eastley. Another highlight now. The belt on the left hand side. Looking for options. He's got Walsh inside. Finds Brewer. And now it's Walsh. Forward to belt. The belt even. Outside it goes to White, and White now, can he swing it in, he can, and, oh, it looks like Saunders was going to get there, but it doesn't matter, because Powell has put his one one nail in front, and that is a great goal, and this is going to sh cause shockwaves in the uh, in the league, because, I'll say it while this is loading, basically, we've, our minimum expectation to, is to avoid relegation, um, we, we won't need to reach the third round of the FA Cup, and the second round of the Carlin, well, Carlin, the Capital One Cup, but White got it here, decent ball in, and, you know, he's got some championship experience, albeit not much because of his injury problems in real life. Not in this game, apparently, but in real life. Um, so, yeah. Right, another highlight now. It's Norwich that's got the attack, it seems. Sears finds Edwards. It's hounded, but it get, finds Taylor. It's wide to Cook now. In a crossing position now. He whips it in. Edwards is there. And he fires it into the top left and corner. And to be fair, that's a great chance. We are predicted to finish 22nd, it's worth noting. So there's no there's no high expectations, no ex you know I'm not going to expect us to get promoted first time out of the championship into the Premier League. I'm going to be more focused on uh, avoiding relegation if I'm being completely honest. Half time and I think we've matched Norwich. You know they nearly got promoted last season. They're one of the favourites to go up. In fact, they might even be the favourite. I'm not entirely sure. Or well, favourite at least out of the teams that that didn't go up. I want to say we're doing well and didn't really get the response I wanted. I'm going to assertively say there's a lot more to come from you. Try and G them up somewhat. somewhat. Some very motivated looking players. There we go. Um, not an, a brilliant response, but a decent one. Into the second half we go. And Norwich get it underway. Fox tries to find Edwards, and he does. He knocks it down for, for Sears. It's a big gap there, it seemed like, but then I realised that my cursor was probably covering over Ackle Wright. Never mind. Right, so not a single highlight. Um, as of yet, um, yeah, um, we've got a chance to make a substitution here. It's going to be a debut for Martin Smith. Uh, he's going to come on for Liam Walsh, who has not been that instrumental, really. Uh, also, Adil Nabi, I think, is going to come on for Callum Saunders. It, I would take a 1 1 draw against Norwich first game of the season away. Um, obviously, the wins are more important, but 
you know, worst case scenario, draw away from home against one of the, the favourites for the league, I think would be a, a very positive positive result. So I'm going to try and force issue here with a couple of offensive changes. Right, still no highlight. Russell Russell is going to come on and make his debut. The £900,000 man from Portsmouth, the relegated Portsmouth, played in this in this division last season, so he knows the division, knows the league, just not in the right way. Can we create something? I mean, you look at the balance of you know of play here. We've had three clear-cut opportunities to their none, and we find ourselves 1-1. One, one. So we haven't been disgraced. We're creating chances. A lot of yellow cards coming our way. Finally a highlight in this half. Kane just boots it straight into the shop's face. Uh, but he's controlled it well with said face. And now it's Jaskalainen in the goal. What is he going to do? He's going to kick it long towards Naby. Is Naby going to be able to bring it down? He's allowed to bring it down, which is poor defending in my eyes. It's a poor pass though, and Saar gets it away. And Hunter is on the charge now. Kane comes away and wins it well. He's on the other card, as are like three other teammates. A long ball over the top from Shop. The Shop even. Naby crosses in towards Brewer. It's, it's spilled by the keeper. He tries to hit it back in. Powell trying to do something, but it's a fourth kick opportunity, and it's only 1-1. One, one. Oh, he's giving it straight to, to Brewer Ferguson in the miscontrol. Naby plays it to Powers in the crossing position here. He's got Russell Russell in the box and Brewer, but he's just like, let Saar take it off his toe. Awesome. Murray goes in. Oh, I thought that was going to be a second yellow card for a second then. Good tackle in the end. The shop. Back to Murray on the right side. Plays it forward to Powell. Powell in the crossing position. Fires Naby! Naby scores to make it 2 1. Two minutes to go. Let's hope we can hold on to this lead, boys. Shop finding Murray. Nice little boy. Could have crossed in, I thought, but no. Opted to find Powell, the assist machine. And uh, yeah, Naby did the rest. The keeper, Raya, maybe a little bit disappointed with his performance there. And that is going to be game over, I think. Goal kick for Norwich, and there's five seconds to go. They're in the wrong end of the field, and you know, played against McKe a 29 year old McKeeker in the, uh, there. Was, he, he, well, he's meant to be class, isn't he, in, in real life? Or, or he's going to be class. But that's a very good result, and I'm, I'm very happy with that. Um, I'm going to say assert assertively. In fact, no, I'm going to say passionately. Yeah. No response. Get in. Anyone get an eight? A couple of people got an eight. Let's passionately uh, say your t yeah, your performance today was very good. As was yours. Very happy with your performance. Thanks for responding. But they seem convinced, which is not ideal. But, you know, we're carrying on where we left off, sort of. You know, we kind of stuttered over the line, but in the end we won, so I'm not going to complain. Right, so, for the next next couple of games, it's probably going to be... I'm not going to do the Yeovil game because we've had the transfer uh, and the uh, well, the Norwich game um, first. The next games we're probably going to do is probably the Chef Wednesday and Bradford City. I think we owe Bradford City uh, something. Uh, well, they owe a, a pasting basically, the beat us 5-1 last time out so you know there's Palace who came down last season I'll maybe do the away game if it's in a decent time you know Sunderland I think came down last season as well that's one thing I forgot to mention actually in fact let's just quickly check that yeah it was Leeds, Palace and Swansea that came down last season so uh, they're going to be obviously tricky games I'm going to try and do the Leeds game uh, I'm not going to lie to you but uh, need to have a look when it is and it is right at the beginning of one of the months so I will probably be doing the Leeds game in the not, not the so distant future but for now it's going to be the um, Chef Wednesday and Bradford City let's get some rain red John Bradford is away from us but at home as well which is where they destroyed us so yeah hopefully we can make amends there um, and hopefully join us for that so hopefully you've enjoyed this video if you have want to press that like button if you'd like to see more feel free to subscribe and until next time Particularly Chef Wednesday, Bradford City. I'll see you then. Bye bye.